Hello and welcome to the Haskell Weekly Podcast. As you might have guessed, this show is about Haskell, which is a purely functional programming language. I'm your host, Sarah Lichtenstein. I'm an engineer here at IT Pro TV. With me today is Andres Schmois, one of the engineers. Thanks for joining me today, Andres. Thank you for having me, Sarah. I'm excited to be here. I think today we're going to be talking about the Haskell Facebook, which is one of the Haskell Weekly topics. And uh, since I'm just starting out here, I thought it would be a pretty good experience to talk about next to you i'm the next newest so we have the two most uh most junior haskell learners here yep i'm actually very excited to continue my learning experience uh, as well as um, maybe even potentially get to a point where i can start teaching things about haskell since it's a very interesting topic for me Absolutely. And I'm really excited to hear more in depth about your learning experience. So why don't you tell me a little bit about what you did to first learn the language? The first thing that I started doing was reading a book um, that uh, probably everyone has heard of, which is Learn You You Haskell for Greater Good. It's something that kind of put me a little bit uneasy about the whole learning experience with Haskell, because um, while it's a great learning resource and You know, it's free, available online, and all the great things that come with all that. There is one downside to it, and it was a little daunting at first. And, you know, that's the same thing with every language out there. But um, one thing that first came to mind was there's a lot of syntax here that I am going to have to learn, which is going to be extremely difficult. Yeah, absolutely. I think I had that same experience when I first came into Shadow before I started working here, um, when they had Haskell up on the screens, and I was just so unlike anything I'd seen before. So it can be really scary at first. Yeah, yeah, definitely. One thing that um, was brought up to us this week was in the you know Haskell Weekly uh, was the Haskell Phrasebook, and it caught my attention because it's a similar resource to Learn You Haskell for Great Good. But it's a lot more quick and succinct. Um, and I do say similar in that they're both beginner pieces, not that you know they match one-to-one on what they actually teach. Right, absolutely. Um, is there any takeaways from the phrasebook that you particularly liked or that you didn't like? One thing I really, really liked about uh, reading through that was how quick and simple each uh, example was. And you know, it starts you off slow with the Hello World. Uh, just like every other resource out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And uh, yeah, I very much like that it was quick, succinct, and from the last three months that I've been doing this uh, high school learning experience, most of the topics that were touched upon there, I have been needing to use. Absolutely. I really like that they introduced GHCID almost immediately because I don't think we started using that until a little bit after Taylor got here. And it's such a useful tool. I mean, we use it every day. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So in talking about the phrasebook, we can't help but highlight a couple um, really important sections. So one of the ones that I wanted to talk about was continual checking because they use GHCID almost immediately. It's the second section in the phrasebook, and it's such a useful tool. And I don't think we started using it until um, Taylor, our lead engineer, got hired here. And it's great to see it represented so early because we use this every day. Yeah, definitely. GHCID uh, was kind of weird to me at first when I when I got started because um, that we already had a compilation tool that was already doing everything for us, and then um, my coworkers started saying, "Hey, you know, we also use GHCID if you want a much faster experience with the compilation and all these things." And I was surprised at first that the compilation side and the GHCID side was so decoupled from each other. Um, It was really nice to see all of these errors instantly happen, not having to wait for the compiler to pick up the changes and um, be a little slow about it. So I very much like that GHCID was instantly brought up. Yeah, the instant feedback loop that it provides is so invaluable. It's amazing. Definitely. Um, Are there any sections that you particularly thought were interesting or would be useful to um, somebody trying to switch to Haskell from, let's say, an imperative language? The one thing that came to mind when I first uh, read through this uh, phrasebook was the fact that at the end of it, they brought up uh, mutable variables and threading. Mm -hmm. That's not something that you see often in um, beginner guidebooks and 
um, and the like. The uh, Learn You Haskell for Great Good did not touch upon uh, mutable variables, uh, did not do threading, maybe mentioned it, I can't really remember off the top of my head, but definitely wasn't uh, anything that stuck out with me. Yeah, those are definitely more um, complex subjects, so for it to be in a beginner's book is really interesting. Yeah, and I think this is more a beginner Haskell that mm -hmm. rather than a beginner programming phrasebook. Now, it could be seen either way regardless um, because you can just pick this up and start coding in Haskell and be perfectly fine. But one thing that I uh, have from my background of uh, coming from an imperative language, uh, my background comes from Java, Android uh, on the front end, and then I'd done some uh, pretty extensive node frameworking and all of that in the back end. So I come mm -hmm. mostly from imperative and I've been doing it for quite a while now. So seeing all of this here is a good thing to see because if I would have started off with this, I would have been like, okay, well, I'm thinking an imperative and I'm going to switch over to Haskell, but I'm going to leave the functional things a little bit behind until I start getting used to the syntax and all of the other weird things that come with it. Right. I definitely can understand that. What was the hardest part for you from switching from an imperative language to something so functional like Haskell? The hardest part was the syntax, weirdly enough. I took a very long time to realize some of the different things that Haskell does to the syntax, like uh, not needing to say which monad you're in explicitly so you could just regular, just use it as if it was already there. A lot of the, the small syntax things really took me out of my comfort zone. And so once I got through that, learning all of the different things Haskell does in, in functional and all of that wasn't as difficult, especially because uh, JavaScript and all of those languages could technically be used in a functional manner. Uh, they're mm -hmm. usually not because they have a bunch of state saving and all that that you can do. But I very much enjoyed, uh, once I got through the syntax, I enjoyed being able to just apply all the knowledge I had into this great functional language that doesn't usually allow state saving. Absolutely. That definitely makes sense. Are there any other parts of the phrasebook that you'd like to highlight or talk about um, here? Well, I, you mentioned saying, uh, coming from an imperative language, what other things stood out to me? The mm -hmm. if, then, and for loops. From an imperative language, they're used pretty extensively. I assume you agree as well. Yes, for the experience I had in imperative languages, we definitely did a lot of those loops. Yeah, and one thing that I've learned over the past three months working on a Haskell server-side uh, coding is that if statements and for loops have been used very sparingly. I think for loops, I have not seen one yet, which is a crazy thing to think about. And if statements we use very rarely because most of our coding is uh, parsing different types and making sure everything is type safe and um, mm -hmm. our responses and if statements don't really come into any of that. So it's interesting to see that once coming back after three months and reading through this phrasebook that if statements are a thing in the programming world. I mean, obviously. Right. But uh, it is nice to be able to come from an imperative language and have the same syntax that we're used to. But then once you start actually working purely in a Haskell manner, you stop using the things that you're used to from imperative languages. Yeah, definitely. Hilariously enough, up until I read this phrase book, I didn't even know that Haskell had for loops. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's actually a pretty good point. I mean, you've been doing this for a year and a half. How was your first uh, three months of your learning experience? My beginning learning experience, I like to call my brain melt um, because every day I would come to work and I would pair with the other engineers and I would feel like my brain was melting out of my ears because it, it was just so much new information and it was just so vastly different from anything else that I had ever learned. But um, as affectionately as I called it the brain melt, I like to say that it also reformed into a bigger, better brain. So it yeah, I... was definitely a challenge for me. I agree completely there. I, I'm going through that brain melt now and, uh, you know, going through the first few weeks was difficult to say the least. It, it wasn't more that I couldn't understand what was happening. It was more that trying to get 
your thoughts into a functional manner became a lot more difficult when at the same time I had to learn the syntax for Haskell. So I could totally see that brain melt being a thing for Haskell learning because you're learning so many things at once. Uh, Mm -hmm. Not unlike learning programming for the first time. So maybe, yeah, maybe it was like that when I first started, I did start at a slightly young age. So I had a lot more time available in my hands. So it could be that a slower pace into Haskell is much less demanding. Uh, But you and me, we both sort of jumped in there and had to learn it as quick as possible. And I think it's a pretty cool skill to have to be able to just jump in and brain brain melt for a week or two and just mm-hmm. keep on learning uh so yeah hopefully one day uh in that one year and a half i'll i'll uh look back and think the same thing that you're seeing absolutely um what really i think kind of helps me solidify my knowledge is being able to um like work with our coworkers and some of our new newer coworkers. Like I distinctly remember um, pairing with you on one of your first days and um, explaining some concept and being like, wow, I know stuff now. Um, so I'm sure you're going to have a similar experience with our new intern, which will be fun for you. Yep, yep, definitely. I've already started seeing uh, that happen. And I, it's a good feeling to be able to explain something after you very recently just learned it. So Absolutely. I totally agree there. Okay, well, is there anything else maybe about the phrase book or about... Um, Learning Haskell, any tips or tricks? Uh, well, one thing that I thought of when I first uh, started learning Haskell was learning you Haskell for great good is a great resource. And right. when I first started reading it, I it was a daunting thing. It was too much at once. And I think it kind of uh, gave me a false sense of this is going to be extremely difficult and possibly not possible. So while it's a great resource... I think it shouldn't be the first thing you read. Um, I think the first thing you read could be this phrase book. Um, it's kind of hard to say at the moment, but uh, just thinking back uh, after these three months, I think the phrase book is a lot more easier uh, thing to start with than learning a great uh, Haskell for great good. Now, that's not to say that learning a Haskell for great good is not something you shouldn't read. I think it's a great read, and I think it will solidify a lot of the things that you've been slowly learning while doing uh, test programs and things like that. So I enjoyed reading both, and I will probably read them again after a month or so, after you know getting a little more stable with my Haskell writing and reading and certain things like that. Absolutely. I definitely think that this phrase book would be a good first introduction um, before the Learn You a Haskell book, just because it's so succinct and so clear and it does make a lot of good bridges from imperative to functional. I agree. Thanks for being on the show with me today, Andres. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed uh, talking about my first experiences with Haskell. Absolutely. Me too. And thank you for listening to the Haskell Weekly podcast. If you like what you heard, find out more at our website, haskellweekly.news. Also, please rate and review us on iTunes. It helps a lot. Haskell Weekly is brought to you by IT Pro TV, the tech skills development platform for IT professionals. And also our employer. Yes, that too. Send anyone who needs their IT needs to www.itpro.tv for all of their learning needs. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next week.